I'm just here to talk a little bit more about how to make a space more inclusive. So I'm Marleni, I go to Smith College and I'm a GitHub campus expert. So in terms of making a hackathon or really any event inclusive, there are multiple different parts that you have to think about. So one major one being the actual event location. So this includes the actual physical location of the event and the venue. In terms of physical location, in terms of physical location it's important for you to actually take a look at where your event venue is actually situated. So whether it's on public transportation lines for those who can't or aren't able to drive or close to disability parking for those who do need to take a vehicle and need easy access into the actual event venue. Again, when it comes to the actual inside of the event, it's really important to make sure that the event is truly accessible. So most venues, at least in the US, you can say that a venue is technically physically accessible, but whether it's actually accessible to all people can be called into question. So making sure that there's gender neutral bathrooms, multiple different areas if somebody needs to have a quiet space if they get overstimulated or to pray, um, having different sleeping areas and having different support services and that can include the ability to make accommodations like having a refrigerator for um, a medication that needs to be refrigerated like insulin and having um, all of the rooms that you are using within the hackathon actually being in a physically accessible place. So again, just um, to shift from the actual location, the actual structure of the event is also important. So your event should be organized in a way that provides sort of respite for the people who are um, getting overwhelmed. So having an event that's structured um, with sessions that are not too long for people who need to take constant breaks or need the opportunity to dip in and out, that's really important. And then putting high pressure and low pressure activities together so that way people have the opportunity to take sort of a break in that. And having the sort of unspoken but understanding rule that people are able to come in and out of sessions and that while there are explicit breaks, that people can move in and out as to whatever they need to do for themselves. And another major thing that, while well, everyone does think about, at least for dietary restrictions, something that really is extremely important is catering and the choices that are made there. So when it comes to catering, a major thing that we found in the past events that I've helped at, that um, deconstructed food, which means like not having pre-assembled things like sandwiches or platters, has been such a great resource for us because it allows the people who might have dietary restrictions full choice and control over what they're eating. And it's also extremely helpful for us as organizers as it allows for you to, again, not have to be worrying about all these different meals, not have to be concerned in case something happens, having the ability to let people make those choices by themselves and making sure that something as little as a condiment won't become an issue for anyone. So a major issue, especially today, is information sharing, how the information that you're conveying to your people actually during the event and then vital information that they need to know. So in terms of information sharing, it's important that um, all of the information is shared in a variety of mediums to make sure that it's completely accessible to all your participants. This includes having it set at the actual event, having it written in multiple things so if people are out for a session that they can come back and see that. And this includes like basics like the actual scheduling, but also things like what to do in an emergency, having clear guidelines as to um, who to call, making sure that's all very accessible and readable to people no matter what their situation is. And then a final thing is having the right support systems available and accessible to people. And that doesn't just include like if somebody needs something changed for like a dietary restriction, that could be for really any type of situation. So it's really important what we found is having something sort of like an information booth where people can go and get basic information about the actual event and what's happening, having a list of resources for people who might be having an issue, whether they have a public safety issue, whether there's an issue about accessibility, having that resources there and letting people know that there is a group for them to contact, having a specific person on point and that could be just a director or a board member for you, having somebody on point who's able to actually understand um, 
what it is that they should be doing to help and that they, people know that they can go to them, that's incredibly useful and will be able to make sure that everyone feels supported. So through all of this, you'll be able to really make your hackathon a much more inclusive space for everyone involved and really allow full participation for people of all abilities. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.